like to introduce Drew. Met Drew a couple of years ago. We both gave a presentation about the Demaray method of swarm control at a Frederick County Beekeepers Association Zoom meeting. This put in the back of my mind, if Varroa ever comes to Australia, we'll perhaps take some benefit of using his idea because a lot of us do use the Demaray method of swarm control. So thank you, Drew, for coming back again and presenting this. Over to you. Thank you. Just to give you a picture of the apiary. So this is where I have my bees. I have all my colonies in a big row on hive stands situated on a rather steep drop off. I have some terraces built down so I can walk around in front of the hives. That allows mowing in front of the hives a little bit easier because the bees are flying above the head. And I use mostly APMA hives. I like the APMA, the insulated hives. I like how they snap together. To me, they've just been a lot easier to work with. And unlike Dan, I love the APMA frames. I'm trying to replace all my wood frames with APMA frames because I find they're much easier to work with. I've never actually broken an APMA frame trying to get it out of a hive, but I've certainly broken several wood frames. So here's the review of the normal Demery method. This was a presentation from the Melbourne Beekeepers Association. The swarm control mid-August, mid-September. For each colony, you're going to need to have at least one box, less one frame of new or drawn frames ready to perform the method. Check the entrance activity to assess the presence of a queen and assess the strength of the colony. Assess the weight of the hive by lifting from the back. Uh, peek under the lid. Lift the hive mat to assess colony strength. Lifting brood frames. Monitor for the presence of drone and queen cells. And if necessary, provide the queen with more laying space by exchanging frames across the excluder. And then if the colony is strong enough, you can perform the demery manipulation. So if queen cells are present, especially if they contain an egg, you want to immediately perform some sort of swarm control, in this case, the demery method. You should also have equipment on hand to collect swarms or when to perform the demery manipulation. We do this as a balance between two factors. So splitting some nurse bees. So the colony needs to be strong enough, but you don't want to wait until the colony has become so large that it's produced queen cells and swarmed. The likelihood of swarming, you're just looking at the presence of drone brood drones, crowded brood boxes with a lot of frames of capped worker brood, presence of queen cells with an egg inside. If you see a presence of queen cells with an egg inside and some royal jelly, then that's the real giveaway. Um, and then if you see queen cells capped, bees have probably already swarmed and it might not be advantageous. So you need to find the queen first. So steps to performing the manipulation. There's two examples over here on the right. There is an example of a hive that has a honey super on it and then a hive that doesn't have a honey super. So essentially what you're doing with the demery is you're taking your frames from your brood box, you're finding the queen, you're putting the frame with the queen back down into the box along with empty frames or frames of drawn comb that she can start laying. And then you take the other frames and you put them up above your honey super up above the queen excluder and those bees will hatch out and they will migrate back down and support the queen and the brood rearing in your brood box. The downside of this particular setup is that as the bees empty out of these top frames that were formerly brood frames, the bees are going to start to backfill those frames with honey. So you could end up with honey in your formerly brood frames. And if you're treating for mites using amitraz or some other thing that might be uh, pervasive in the wax, you're going to end up with that in your honey frames, which you probably won't want to do. So I came up with a solution for this, and that would be the Lenhard method. And it's based around this piece of equipment. Not a lot of people have, but it is pretty common. It's a bee escape. I use the Saracel Great Escapes that are manufactured in New Zealand. I like these a lot. They do very well. They don't tend to break. They're easy to clean. I don't have to paint them. <laughs> they won't mold up or mildew or anything else. And then other beescapes um, below uh, will work. So I have a couple of these wood triangles. Sometimes these wood triangles have popped off when they get glued down to the uh, to the frames below. So that, that's been an issue for me. But they work just as well as the Great Escape. They're a little bit cheaper than the Great Escape, which comes in handy. But you probably want to spend some time painting them, which you may or may not have time for. This is another picture looking more directly on to the wooden triangle escape. And then there are some other bee escapes too. I haven't used these, but there's some plastic inserts you can put in to normal inner covers and make them into a bee escape. 
I would imagine they work. I've read some reviews that they don't quite work as well as the triangles. I haven't had a lot of reviews that I've seen of the Great Escape, but maybe there's just not as many people to use it. Okay, so that's overview on B escapes. The basic premise of the Lenhart method is an addition of a B escape to prevent the backfilling of brood frames with honey that would normally happen using the Demery method. So this prevents honey from being made in frames that could contain trace miticides. I use this primarily with APMA hives that provide good insulation for retaining heat on sparsely populated brood frames. It's also helpful for clearing brood frames to have empty drawn brood comb without major losses of bees. So sometimes I get into a situation where I want to clear bees out of some frames and I can easily do that with a bee escape. This is applicable to singles, doubles, and any size honey super you could come up with. To go over the method in a little bit more detail, I'm taking a look at a typical double deep at spring swarming season. I use all single deeps now, but I know a lot of people still use the double deeps. It works the same way if you're using it for a single deep as it would for a double deep, though. Just one less box to deal with. So looking at one of my 2021 um, spring inspections, one of my colonies, I had the honey super in March, uh, which is pretty early for us, but I was going to be going on vacation for two weeks. So I didn't want to get back from vacation and then be blindsided by swarming. So I want to get those on ahead of time. With the Ape May insulated hives, it helps. The first white blooms on the uh, area trees were on March 27th. I had uh, drone brood under queen excluder, bottom two deeps full of nectar coming in and uh, queen cups but no eggs on april 5th and then when i did my april 10th inspection i have swarm cells the honey super frames are quarter full at that point so i started the demery manipulation first manipulation so i'm taking empty frames i'm taking an extra deep box i'm taking a bee escape and an additional queen excluder the additional queen excluder is really optional but I find it helps a little bit to reduce burr comb in your bee escape or the extended duration that the bee escape is going to be on the hive. So then this is the hive as I find it at the start of the manipulation. And then stepping over to the right, you see what I've done. Just like the normal Demery, I've taken most of the brood frames out of here, leaving one brood frame with the queen. I'm going to shake the frame with the queen on it first to make sure that there's no emergency queen cells on that frame because I don't want to put back a queen cell that's going to end up leading to a swarm. I like to leave a frame or two of stores down in the first deep box just so that it's available for the bees to use. Most of the time, they're going to fill those frames up with stores anyway. So I find it's easy just to leave them there. And up above my super, then I have the queen excluder and then the bee escape. And then I stack in the extra brood frames that I moved up from the bottom. And then on my extra deep in the top, I have some empty space where I don't have frames, but I'm not really worried about it because the bees aren't going to be up there building wax. They're going to be moving down as they hatch out. So then I'll put the stores above that as well, any additional stores. And these bees will have those stores to go to because they won't be flying out and bringing back in new stores. So stores will not be added to this. It's only going to be taken away as the bees that remain are going to tend to care for the brood. All right. So what do I find when I come back the next week? I find that honey production continues in the honey super unimpeded. Most of the bees have moved down below this bee escape, but there are some bees remaining that will continue to care for this brood up here. Most of the eggs lost in the former uh, second deep up here, and you do lose most of your eggs. So they're not going to raise the eggs into larvae. They're just going to abandon those. And I think because it's probably a lack of coverage as a lot of the bees move down, or perhaps there's not enough nurse bees up there anymore to feed them. But any of the brood that's past the egg stage, um, they're going to continue to care for and they don't abandon. Particularly if you have cat brood, all your cat brood is going to survive. I'm also looking at some emergency queen cells on the frames up here. So when the bees finally realize they're separated from their queen, they started making some emergency queen cells. Down in the first deep, um, the bees are drawing out frames and the queen is filling them in brood as the comb is being made. You don't necessarily have to use empty frames though. You can use frames of drawn comb if you have them. One thing you do want to check for still is the possible emergency queen cell that could be in your first deep. So what happened was I did find an emergency queen cell in this case. So I decided to make another manipulation. So what I did is I went in and destroyed the emergency queen cell that was in the bottom demery. And then I took some of my emergency queen cells from the second deep 
and actually made two nukes off of this hive and condensed these two boxes above the bee escape down to one box with the remaining brood. So if you're shaking the nurse bees from the frames in the former second deep, you may want to remove the bee escape for a day to let some nurse bees come back up. I try not to shake bees above the bee escape because when they tend to fall down on the bottom of the box, if I'm shaking them into an empty box, they're just going to go down. So typically I'll remove that box off and put it over something else that I can shake down into without losing the bees through the bee escape. I can lift it up and I can throw down a propolis trap underneath. My last little note here, what I was saying is if you're dividing up and creating some nukes at this point and you have an extra frame or two, it's okay to put it down in the first deep as opposed to leaving a box with one frame of bees in it above the second deep above the bee escape. Moving on to the 14th day. So this is two weeks after the initial manipulation. Found the hive without any more emergency queen cells. So what's happening here? Honey is still being produced in the honey super. There's no more emergency queen cells. The brood has been emerging from all the brood frames up in the second deep. And some of the frames are now just mostly empty cells. And now I can start to recombine some of these empty brood frames back into the hive down below so that the bees don't continue to have to work to draw it and find emergency queen cells. Your honey is still going to be produced. You're still going to have frames that are emptying a brood up above the bee escape. If you have any emergency queen cells in the bottom, uh, you're going to have to take action again, do another manipulation. This is what I would have done in that case. I'm just taking the queen, putting her back down with the now empty drawn comb that I had moved up top, along with a frame of brood and some empty frames that they can continue to draw out comb. I've now restacked the brood frames in the former second deep above the bee escape and an additional queen excluder. And then I went ahead and I added in a second super of drawn comb to make sure that they are not running out of space to store the honey. Sometimes they don't want to go all the way out to the edges. And so I just leave them an extra super. I want to make sure that at least in our area, when the nectar flow hits for usually the black locust in May, it hits really hard and they'll fill up boxes really quick. I always try to make sure I have some extra space for the bees. Looking out then three weeks, what's going to be happening here at this point to so all the brood, except for the drone brood from that first deep on top, which is the former second deep, that's all going to be emerged or in the process of emerging from the first manipulation. Honey's still coming in. It's being put in the supers, not in any of your brood frames. And if the first demery manipulation didn't stop the urge to build swarm cells, I've found that the subsequent second manipulation is far likely to stop that. In the absence of bees above the bee escape, you'll end up with a high beal or wax moth colony. Three weeks, the clock is really ticking to do something with this former second deep or remove it or add some bees back to it. But after three weeks, you want to be careful not to let this go to where there are no bees up there. Because absence of bees, you're going to have a hive beetle colony instead of a bee colony. So to clean this up then, I'm just rearranging the hive, removing the bee escape and the second queen excluder, putting my first super back on top, second super below that, queen excluder, and I'm just taking this second deep and just putting it right back down on top of the first deep. So now the queen's going to have more space. All the bees are going to be together and you have open foam for her to lay in and you still have all your honey is only in your honey supers. They haven't gone up and putting anything in the brood frames. And then I wanted to note here that you can even take this opportunity if you're trying to knock your hives down from two deeps to a single deep, like I like to now, you can take this opportunity to rearrange the hive into a single deep or maybe just the summer if you want to give it a try for the summer and not have to do full inspections on two deep boxes. Wrapping up then, I guess, is there any questions? I'd hope that everyone sees how this can work for a single deep. I have added a little diagram over here that shows what the manipulation would look like after the single deep as opposed to a double deep. Does anyone else use bee escapes currently for harvesting honey? Bee Frank, yeah, I, I use bee escapes that good. I've given up using them because I haven't found them necessary, but I'll certainly be looking at those New Zealand bee escapes. So Drew, look, thanks very much for preparing and presenting that. And this is going to be extremely useful for us in the recording to look at when we do get Varroa. We have been told that if we use hard chemicals, we're not allowed to mix up brood frames with honey frames. Well, you've given an alternative, which has worked for you. I was going to say the alternative is to take those extra brood frames out and use them for nukes. 
we've got the same, you're not meant to. And that's why a lot of commercial beekeepers use single brood boxes, cheaper for variety treatment, and also you're not piling them up with chemical. But again, then we're changing three frames in each box each year anyway, so that gets rid of the chemical residue. And I guess our objective with backyard beekeepers is we want to get away from making too many extra hives. <laughs> it's uh, called beekeeper's creep. Uh, yes, yes. Um, one key point I got from thinking about it, Drew, is basically you're using the bee escape to get the forages in the top box to go back to the bottom. Okay, so thank you, Drew.